Je sais, ça va vous paraître de plus en plus chelou ce que je vous raconte. Mais en fait, en surfant sur Internet, dans l'espoir de trouver une solution pour me soigner, je suis tombée sur ce qu'on appelle la thérapie par elle-minte. C'est la thérapie par verre. Alors comme ça, je sais, ça paraît super contre-intuitif de dire qu'on va ingérer des verres pour se soigner. Mais en réalité, les verres ne sont pas toujours des parasites. Parfois, justement, ils peuvent entraîner notre immunité et aider à guérir un tout un tas de, de maladies. Là, je suis à l'aéroport, je vais euh, aux états unis rencontrer un, un professeur qui va pouvoir m'expliquer comment fonctionne la thérapie par elle minte et peut-être qu'on ben, va voir si ça peut marcher pour moi ou pas. Quoi. Therapy. The idea behind helminthic therapy is that our loss of helminths, our intestinal worms in modern society, has made us susceptible to certain kinds of diseases, um, autoimmune diseases, allergic disorders, digestive disorders, and even neuropsychiatric disorders now, we believe, are connected with the loss of our intestinal worms. The effects of that are probably still increasing in the population generation after generation. So helminthic therapy is just an attempt to put the helminths back in. It sounds a little bit too good to be true to someone who's used to the pharmaceutical industry, but just think of it as more of normalizing your system, similar to exercise and a healthy diet and stress reduction. Essentially, you could think of it as a probiotic worm, although that's technically a an oxymoron or a misnomer or something because probiotics by definition are bacteria. With IBS and SIBO, you would you would think that if you if you have a benign helminth, it wouldn't hurt. Explain me what are the different kinds of worms we can use. There's three worms in common use: the TTO, the TSO, and the HTC. You just take them orally. You drink it. Yep, you drink it. So you put It's, it in water. Uh, you put it in almond milk or Kool-Aid. Some people even mix it with beer. Now, the other type of worm, you have to put a patch somewhere on your skin. A lot of people used to use the forearm. I think they're switching to the feet now, um, which is probably a very good move. That's naturally how it probably would be obtained in most cases by stepping in, you know, somewhere where the worms exist. But how does it actually help the immune system? So they produce their own molecules. They produce dozens of molecules, and each worm is producing different ones. We don't know what all those molecules are right now. And it's interesting for us to think about, but since we already know the worms will work, number one, and we know that people are suffering, you know, maybe we should, we believe, it's our opinion, we should go ahead with the therapy, and then later on, if we want to, we can figure out exactly what's going on. Then we can maybe work to engineer a better worm or to cultivate a better worm, something like that. So how does it work? Do these rats have worms? The rats will have adult worms, and we keep them in pairs because they're very social. And in the droppings of the rats, mm -hmm. that's where the eggs are contained. Okay. So then we feed those droppings to the beetle. Right here, inside this box, we have some beetles that are being what we call loaded up with eggs. Each one of these insects will have between about two and 200 worms. So we'll dissect the guy out to get the worms. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna separate the abdomen from the rest of the beetle, just like that. And this is the abdomen. Put a little bit of liquid in there. This is saline. And you see the little cloudy material coming out? Yeah. So that'll be the helmets. Well, let me put it dead in the middle. So there's almost enough to treat one patient for one to six weeks. Look, there's probably about 150, and this one would be my guess. 150? Yeah. 
why don't they move? Once somebody eats them, the stomach acid will activate them, and then once they get through the stomach, the bile salts will cause them to break out of their shell. Mm -hmm. Inside this little round piece here, that's the entire worm. This whole thing from here to here is only about a third of a millimeter. This jelly coating around it is what helps it get through the acid stomach. En fait, une fois que tu vois comment ça se passe, tu te dis que bah, finalement, euh, j'aimerais presque bien avoir une sorte de petite ferme d'insectes à la maison. Et tu te dis que bah, c'est pas si compliqué, ça a pas l'air scientifiquement le truc le, le plus dur à reproduire. Et bah, je sais pas, je me dis je vais acheter des insectes et peut-être le faire. Enfin, ça, ça donne envie de faire ça, disons. Là, j'attends Alésia, qui est une femme qui se soigne par thérapie par elle mainte et qui va me montrer en fait comment on s'inocule des verres. Donc là, elle doit arriver dans 5 minutes, je l'attends et j'ai super hâte de discuter avec elle pour, pour comprendre mieux comment ça marche et comment ça, ça aide véritablement les malades. Hi, welcome. What kind of health problem do you have? Uh, I have eosinophilic esophagitis and eosinophilia, which is one type of white blood cell and mast cell activation syndrome, which is uh, another type of white blood cell. Basically, that means I have fatigue, malaise, and a lot of uh, intolerances to food and smells. And Normally, I have a very limited diet to avoid those types of symptoms, but I still have the fatigue pretty much all the time, no matter what I do. And so today, which one are you going to take? Um, today I have um, NA, the human hookworm, and that is the one I've been taking the longest now. The number is the, the number of NA inside, okay. and uh, this one is just uh, distilled water. I'll just give it a shake and mm -hmm. make sure they're awake. Should we get everything? And onto the bandage. Get self -thinking. With my first inoculation, like as soon as the bandage touched my skin, I felt this like stinging. Um, with some others, it took maybe like 12, 24 hours before it started. The first time you did it, were you scared or did you feel a bit disgust? Um, I guess I was just really excited and, and really hopeful. Do you feel anything actually in your body or, or you don't? Um, there are some people that say they can, they can feel them like migrating. I've noticed from all three species I've gotten sort of like a bubbly feeling in my stomach from each of them, and with each species it feels different. Uh, did you talk about hermetic therapy with some regular doctor? I told uh, quite a few of my doctors about it, and they weren't really too crazy about it. There was a lot of medications they were prescribing me to take, and I was saying, I don't tolerate them, I, I can't take them anymore. And at one point he asked me, well, why are you willing to deal with the side effects from the helmets and waiting so long for those to be effective, but not from this medication. My body was really rejecting the medication. Like the medication was breaking something and the helmets were fixing something. It was like bad pain and good pain. Like that, that piece was missing and you're just putting it back. Donc après avoir rencontré Alésia, ce que je peux dire, c'est que s'inoculer des verres, ça n'a pas l'air d'être très compliqué. Ceci dit, ce qui est intéressant, c'est que pour ce docu, j'ai contacté plein de, de labos, j'ai contacté ces fermes de, de verres, et la plupart ont refusé parce que ce qui se passe, c'est qu'au niveau de la loi, c'est pas très clair, dans le sens où les verres, ce sont ni des aliments, ni des médicaments, donc c'est une zone très grise, et par conséquent, ces labos n'avaient pas du tout envie d'être dans la lumière. Mais il y a un labo qui a, qui, qui a accepté de me parler au téléphone et du coup ben je, je vais aller là tout de suite passer un coup de fil. Why are you cultivating worms? Why, why are you doing that? I started growing them for personal use and then I started to sell them when one of the providers had to stop delivering. So it took me about six months to develop a safe product towards the customers. Yeah. Is it legal to sell worms for this kind of health problem or is it not? Why is it touchy? In many, many countries, there is not really a regulation and actually you're just selling a small animal. In the US, there is an import restriction by the FDA. So it's illegal in the United States? 
it's not illegal, but they classified it as a biological agent or let's say a biological drug. They oblige you to go through the same steps as a new uh, drug would go and go into those clinical trials that cost uh, a lot of money, uh, yes. millions of dollars. Yeah. So in Europe, there are not really any rules prohibiting it or promoting it so that there are not really any laws about it at the moment. So a few countries already have it registered as a therapy. Okay. I think Thailand is one of them. Other countries are working on it, but it's, yeah, it's still pretty new. From my end, I'm also lo looking with the local government to have some sort of, of registration as an alternative therapy. Je vais aller skyper avec Graham Rook, qui est un spécialiste de l'évolution darwinienne. Parce qu'apparemment, vu qu'on aurait, euh, soi-disant, évolué avec euh, des éléments euh, dans nos intestins, euh, j'aimerais avoir euh, son avis euh, sur la question. The way the helminths are working is via what are called epigenetic mechanisms. Say you are a pregnant woman and you have a helminth infection, and then the immune system of that baby will develop in the presence of a helminth infection. So in that baby, if you suddenly remove the helminth, then the immune system might go crazy because it no longer has the suppressive effect of the helminth. We certainly lack biodiversity in the microorganisms in our bodies now. One very obvious way of looking at this is to compare the organisms in our guts with those of hunter-gatherer societies still living in the way in which humans evolved, they have a much, much more diverse population of bacteria and other microorganisms in their guts. Je suis pas 100% sûr que cette thérapie s'adresse à moi dans le sens où c'est une thérapie qui a l'air plus de corriger des problèmes immunitaires que des problèmes de microbiote, bien que ce soit très interconnecté et lié. Donc je ne sais pas exactement, je vais garder ça dans un coin de ma tête. Je trouve le concept absolument passionnant. Je dirais que c'est pas la première thérapie que je testerai. Our loss of helminths, or intestinal worms in modern society, has made us susceptible to certain kinds of diseases. 